Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. I'm Ben. If you guys missed it, I just picked up this 2023 XR650L and the plan for this bike is to do sort of a light adventure build series, something that I'll be able to take camping, but yet also sort of strip down and try to run single track on. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. In the previous video, we did a few kind of cleanup items. Uh, most importantly, we swapped out the stock front sprocket for something that actually Actually utilizes the entire width of the spline area so we don't chew any teeth off when we're doing wheelies and with that very important modification out of the way we can now move on to other things that have been driving me absolutely crazy I don't know about you guys but I'm getting pretty sick of hearing myself complain about these stock seven ace handlebars now for somebody who grew up on motocross bikes these bars might not be in a half bad location but for me right or wrong they're too low they're too swept back and they're actually just kind of too close to me. I like something a little bit farther away, a little bit higher up, and something that doesn't require me to hunch over so much when I want to stand up and ride. I've also really just grown to dislike seven ace handlebars in general, and that's mostly because of this cross brace here. It really just kind of gets in the way if you want to mount a GPS here, or if you're hoping to install a universal windshield like this that needs to clamp onto the bars, and you've got a set of the wraparound handguards that have to clamp on here, you really just don't have any room. And if you guys saw that last video where I was out on this bike, it was a little bit chilly, so I definitely would have appreciated a little bit more wind protection. So huge thanks Rocky Mountain ATV for sending me all these parts. I could not make videos like this without their support. And also a huge thanks to any of you guys that have been using the affiliate links down in the more section. It really is the only thing that allows me to keep making videos like this for you guys. So huge thanks to you. And actually speaking of that, I've had a couple of you guys asking me about this Tusk lift that I've been using. I feel like it is very important to point out the fact that this thing is actually only rated for 300 pounds. So in other words, a 350 pound machine really shouldn't be on this lift. I don't know what the limiting factor is, but I have found uh, a couple issues. It can't quite get the bike off of the ground, but if I give the bike just a little bit of a lift while I push down on the pedal, it does seem to climb up just fine. But even still, putting a bike that is 50 pounds over the max limit on something this high off the ground is probably not very smart. So my official recommendation is if you've got this bike or any bike that's over the 300 pound weight limit, I would discourage you from purchasing this. It's just not really a safe thing to do and it's not something that I would recommend trying at home. So I don't know about you guys, but back when I started motorcycling, I assumed that things like tires and handlebars were basically just part of the motorcycle and not really an accessory that you'd switch out for better performance or personal preference or maybe even for aesthetics. But now I have totally changed my mind on all of that. I think all of them can definitely add or detract from your performance and they definitely add a different look to the bike. And I will eventually be switching out the stock tires on the XR for something more aggressive, but I just wanted to take the time to point out how sort of sad and puny this bike looks when you take everything off of the bars, which is to say what I'm about to do, I think really should improve the look of this bike, even though, again, it's not something that I think most people think of as an aesthetic feature of a motorcycle. I also wanted to point out the fact that I'm about to upset some of you guys when I grind these little nubs off of the inside of my controls. Essentially, these made up with 
some holes inside of the handlebars. And there's one right there. Actually not seeing one inside of the throttle tube, but I believe one of these controls over here, yeah, this one's got one. Master cylinder does not. Now, of course, I understand these do sort of help keep the controls from rotating once they're on the bars. But to be honest, I think the reason that manufacturers are putting them there are actually just to help their assembly team make sure that everything ends up in the right spot and just to speed up the process in general. But I've been clipping these things off for years and have never had an issue. If there is one, it's really not that big of a deal to wrap a little bit of electrical tape around it just to sort of bring that diameter up a little bit. And you really shouldn't have any problems. If you guys prefer to drill holes and keep your nubs on, then I would say go for it. Whatever works best for you is the best way to do it. So this is the new set of bars that I'm going to be sticking on the bike. These are a Tusk 1 and 1 Ace chub bar. These are going to be the ATV high bend. And obviously these are not going to fit in the stock clamps here. We will fix that in just a moment. As far as the actual bend of the bars go though, these are noticeably higher, maybe, maybe almost an inch higher. Definitely much, much less sweep. Uh, uh, certainly a more aggressive looking handlebar. So now in order to solve this, well, situation here, we've got a couple different risers to try out here. We've got the Tusk Universal Big Bar Clamp. This is just going to be a straight, almost one inch rise and will convert from a seven ace to a one and one ace. The Rox Offset Risers here will convert from a seven ace to either a seven ace or a one and one eighth. These can either be mounted in an orientation that would bring the bar a little bit farther forward and away from you or a little bit closer and a little bit further back to you. So let's test these out and see what feels better. Let's see how these feel. So these are definitely noticeably higher. Uh, the sweep is exactly what I like. Uh, it's just kind of a perfect bend for me. I don't like how far back the previous bars were swept. However, if you guys remember back when I had the Tenere 700, if you have a bar that's too straight, it can kind of put some strain on your wrists. The rise of the bars is noticeable. Um, the rise from the risers themselves is also noticeable. They still do feel now kind of close to me, I guess. So let's try that other set quick. So now again, these can either be mounted in an orientation that would bring the bars a little bit closer to you, or in my case for this bike, a little bit farther away. If you guys remember back when I had the Tenere 700, I actually did buy a similar set to these that are on the 701 now that actually did get mounted in a way that would bring the bars a little bit closer to me. Just kind of depends on your stature, what you like, and of course what you're riding. And you do have to keep in mind that that change in X and Y dimension is going to be somewhat dependent on the angle or rake that your forks are at. But either way, in comparison to the straight rise, obviously you can tell we are moving quite a bit further forward and a little bit further up even. I can't promise perfection, but I have been trying to keep the center line of the bar here in the center line of the clamps, just so we're sort of comparing apples to apples as much as possible. <laughs> That definitely feels much, much better. Uh, feels like my back is sort of in the right position and I think should kind of help with my back issues. Honestly, I, I mean, I still feel like these could even be a little bit farther forward. Obviously, you sort of run into some limitations with that. Maybe I could go with a different riser that might get me a little bit more rotation forward. But honestly, I think these are a pretty darn good option. However, I think it is important to mention that to get a set of these on your bike is going to cost uh, like 35 bucks, I think, something like that, where these, well, these are about 100 so after I went in for dinner last night, I decided to take a look at the footage comparing the handlebars and just kind of the footage in general of the bike and how the bars looked on it because, well, they almost look a little bit like ape hangers to me. And maybe I'm just being overcritical or it's 
odd to me to see this without the hand guards and stuff on, but it just, I don't know, sort of looks funny that the bars are so much higher than the headlight and windshield. I like guess not really much of a windshield, but you know what I mean. I think once we get something a little bit higher on there, like say maybe an actual windshield, it'll look a little less strange and not that a clear universal windscreen is my goal because obviously it works, but it's not really the, I don't know, coolest looking thing, I guess. And I know a form should be before function on a dual sport, but I like to build bikes that I enjoy looking at as much as I enjoy riding. Even beyond aesthetics, there are some issues and I've sort of resolved that by moving the bars, uh, I guess I would say maybe a tick forward. I've also got both of the controls rotated pretty far down and that doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, it's actually a little bit better for standing up and riding, but it's mostly all because of the fact that well, my clutch cable ends up being a little bit too short. When I had the bars rotated back and these up in, I guess what I would say was my normal position, when this was turned all the way to the left here, which is gonna be kind of worst case scenario, this line, I mean, it, it, even still now, it does take a pretty hard turn, but the thing is, it's not really tight at all anymore. And I mean, it, it, it definitely was at one point, but it certainly doesn't look good. But again, I mean, it's just, it's not really pulling on it that much, or at least not any more than it was to begin with before I even touched the bars. So I don't think it's a problem, but the thing is once you do this a couple hundred thousand times, I mean, that any little bit of extra bend that you add into the equation is definitely gonna start to wear things down. And I don't know about you guys, but I definitely prefer to have a working clutch and clutch cable when I'm out on a ride hundreds of miles from home. So because of both the aesthetics and the clutch situation, I had really been considering sticking this moto bend on the XR. I think they might just look a little bit less, well, ape hanger-ish and it would only drop the actual control section a little bit more than three quarters of an inch. The ATV high bend bars have a 4.75 inch rise and the moto bend bars on the tw had a i think 3.9 inch rise man these bars sure do feel like they're in a good spot i don't know that dropping them a little bit more than three quarters of an inch and actually i think moving a little bit forward just a hair just because it would sort of follow the angle of both the bars and uh, the forks if i did get a shorter set on here i could still stretch my legs out and i guess maybe my back to when I started filming this, I was going to be explaining how I was deciding that I was going to leave those bars on there, but now that I've gone through all that and talked through it a bit with you guys, it almost seems like maybe I should try the Moto Bend bars on there. I think the ATV high bend bar with these risers definitely is a good option and something that you could make work. You guys can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but I've read that the XR600 cable is actually slightly longer than the XR650L clutch cable. And I think Motion Pro actually sells a three inch extension. I guess I don't know if it goes up here or down towards the bottom there, but there definitely are some options if this ATV high bend bar seems like something that you guys would want. I think honestly though, it'd probably be kind of silly not to give these a try. Well, that certainly looks a little bit more uh, normal, I guess. A little bit less like a chopper, uh, which is definitely uh, making me much happier. And these just look like they make more sense on the bike. They just kind of fit it a bit better. And maybe some of you guys are laughing at me for that. But like I said, I, I like to build bikes that look good too. And personally, I think it is the details that really make a build. But I suppose we should hop on here because of course, if this is going to be horrible, then well, I'll just have to deal with the ape hangers. I cannot imagine that I would really miss that little bit of extra height and if I do I mean I can always switch back so I think I think these are definitely the ones that I would go with standing up really is not bad if anything they're going to kind of force me to be over the front wheel a little bit which believe it or not it's important to keep weight on that front wheel and uh, keep it from washing out which sometimes I, I tend to forget and by sometimes I mean all the time so maybe that won't be a bad thing I definitely like that they're further away from the pegs I mean it, it really does feel good it still gives me the ability to pretty much stand up straight and stretch and I mean it feels like it should be a pretty good position to do some aggressive riding in so I guess now the only question is will the uh, ATV high bend bars fit on the TW with the tusk conversion uh, chub risers. Not so sure that they will. I think things will be a little bit tight over there, but that'll be a separate video. Let's just get this one going for now. Well, I couldn't help myself and just had to try it out quick. Seems like 
this is actually a pretty good combination and I don't know why they look so much better on here. I'm really hoping it's not just because I actually have all the accessories and the clamps in the middle here. It honestly could just be that, but really I did always kind of want to try the ATV high bend bars on here and I promised this was not my plan. I guess it was my backup plan maybe, but not something that I really wanted to do, especially since I've got heated grips on this bike and this is the, I think, second time that I've actually lifted and replaced the, the same heating element on here. Could just snip the lines and put some connectors in there, but I like doing things the hard way. And I've got to say, I'm really pretty happy with this. I think the uh, straight risers do work okay on here. I've got these bars rolled forward a bit, and I did have to make a few quick modifications in kind of where things are tilted just to give myself a little bit of extra room here. Rotated this down uh, just a bit, and seems like they'll work. I just hope that I don't regret it and wish that they were on this bike. <laughs> So we're now ready to stick a set of grips on the bike, but since we'll be doing these wraparound handguards that I like so much, we will of course have to cut the ends off of these. Now I've done a couple different things in the past. I've basically just took the complete end off of the grip before, but of course that kind of removes a bit of real estate for your hand and thick winter gloves. So the best thing to do is really just to cut a hole right in the center of this. And even with an X-Acto knife and being super careful, I've still made these look, well, maybe not awful, but certainly not good. So that's why I asked them to send me the grip cutter here. So this is going to be, I think, pretty slick and a really nice tool to have. Basically, you've just got this extension along with two different size grip cutters. One will be for the throttle side and this other smaller one will be for the clutch side. And that's of course because one diameter is just a little bit larger than the other for the throttle. So pretty hard to screw this up. These will go just directly in the center which is going to locate them and basically all we'll have to do is push it through the other side. Just thread that extension in there. Then that will just go all the way down to the bottom. There we are. Much, much, much easier, much, much faster, and man, does that look so much better. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be my new favorite tool. We've got the big old throttle side here with the larger die. Now, apparently you do have to be a little bit careful. It seems like that one didn't end up quite on center, but still definitely beats the old way that I was doing it. Now, if you guys have seen any of my other TW videos, you've definitely seen these Tusk D-Flex handguards. I believe they are bent out a little bit further than the motocross ones. That's actually what I had on this bike, or what was on the bike, I guess I should say, when I picked it up. And you can kind of see that weird bend that was actually sort of interfering with the levers. I had to have the levers kind of turned down a ways because the levers ends just wouldn't clear the guards. So I would definitely recommend going with the adventure set if you have a dual sport and it looks like they've actually even upgraded the spacers. I guess maybe I just didn't use the spacers on the TW. I really don't remember because the non-adventure version just comes with these, which yeah, that's what's on the TW. So maybe I just didn't need that on that bike. So I guess we'll just see if we need the longer fasteners and the additional spacer. But the reason that I wanted to show you the ones on the TW is it looks like they have changed these a bit. So they are now powder coated, I believe black. Uh, the mounts are also powder coated black. And you do of course have to remember if you're going to go with a one and one eighth chub bar that you have to get the clamps that are 
tapered on the inside here and uh, of course just a bit larger for this transition here. The other thing that's a bit new with these guards is these little side protectors that will go just kind of on the corner here and that's actually where it seems like a lot of the wear kind of ends up happening anyways so I think that will be really nice to have this protected so you're not scuffing the aluminum up. And if you guys haven't noticed it already we've got an ATV seat heater there along with a set of heated grips and I have used the the grip heaters in the past we've got them on the TW200 here whereas the 701 actually came with a set of Oxford heated grips the Oxford heated grips are far superior to the Tusk grip heaters but to be honest for the difference in cost I just really don't have too many complaints about these things they definitely don't get as hot but they are certainly better than nothing they're pretty low amp draw and Eh, I don't know. They're pretty easy to install. And the plan is going to be to install both of these things in a separate video for today. We're just going to get the bars on and then I'll go and test them out to make sure they're what I want. But if you guys want to make sure you see that video, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you guys watching along. I gotta say, I could not be much happier with this setup. I mean, this is just, just perfect. It looks so good. I love the black on black on white with a little bit of silver mixed in. Everything just feels good. It makes me so happy. I, I can't even explain it to you guys how much I like doing this stuff. This is like one of my favorite things to do to bikes. It's kind of why it's sort of the first thing uh, that I do or the first kind of big ergonomic and aesthetic change that I make. For, I mean, really not all that much money, you can set yourself up with a really, really nice set of bars. You've got good protection, you've got protection from the wind, and you've got a bike that sort of looks custom. You don't really realize how junky the factory bars and pan guards look until you get something like this. It really pulls a bike together and I think it really just kind of changes the overall look and it makes it look like it's a bike that's ready to do some off-roading and makes it look aggressive and I love it. And with the Moto Ben bars on here, it looks like the clutch cable has, I mean, just miles of extra space in here. I mean, there's there's no reason that we got to be concerned about that at all. As far as the little adventure bar spacers here, I mean, we've got more than enough room here. I don't know that I would recommend installing them without. The only reason that I would say maybe you'd want to is just that you get this little bit of a higher portion, well, that much closer to protecting the, I guess, main part of your hand. I suppose if I wanted to, I could scoop my grip a little bit further away from the throttle cable housing there, but it seems like that should be okay. Either way though, it is nice to have a little bit of extra real estate there so you're not so crunched up. No issues with the brake lever over here at all. Plenty of space. Oh, that looks so good, doesn't it? The other thing that you of course want to make sure that you do is rotate your bars at full lock in both directions, making sure that both ways, both sides are completely happy and that you don't have any tight sections. Uh, again, that one's totally fine there. Choke cable seems good as well. And you do of course want to check operation at those points to make sure nothing is sticking, especially the throttle. 
yeah, no issues, no worries. Everything seems good. I did end up rotating these moto bars a tick forward as well. I think this line is more or less centered on my clamps. And I used to really not like that, but when you're standing, you're more over the bars anyways. So it just kind of seems like it works out a little bit better. And having them sort of tilted forward also helps keep them a little bit farther away from the pegs. And if you guys haven't noticed, I didn't put Loctite on anything yet, which I would definitely recommend just putting some blue thread blocker on there. And I will definitely do that. I think I might take this thing out for a ride first though, just to make sure that I'm happy with everything. So let's do that. What a beautiful day for a ride. I think it's almost 50 degrees and man, I could not be happier sitting down on this thing. The ergonomics are just absolutely perfect. I mean, I, I don't even know if I'd want them any higher with the ATV high bend bars. I mean, these, these basically put the bars and my arms and my shoulders and my back right exactly where I want them. I mean, I, I couldn't be happier. I think it looks awesome. Man, I, I love it. However, uh, when I stand up, uh, I still kind of feel like they're, you know, again, could be a little bit higher and a little bit further forward. But now that I think about it, I mean, I run it into my tank bag and yeah, I, I could get a smaller tank bag or take the tank bag off but I don't want to do either of those things. I need a big tank bag for my camera equipment. So I'm thinking maybe the best thing to do is going to be to lower and set the pegs back a ways because uh, that should really fix all my issues standing up then and should be, I think, comfortable enough, uh, maybe even more comfortable when I'm seated. So definitely happy, definitely recommend it. But of course, we'll do more testing. If you guys want to see those videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care, stay safe, stay swanky. Get out and enjoy this beautiful world for yourself whenever you get a chance. And hey, if you can't do that right now, uh, here's some more videos to check out in the meantime. Also, I just traded the KLR650 in for another bike! Goodbye! <laughs>